Welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. It's good we gather together on this special day in the church year. I want to encourage you, if you find it helpful to have our St. Paul Lutheran Church app, you'll have uh, information, announcements, uh, the worship bulletin, and other um, information is there available for you about church activities and events. Thanks for bearing with us through these past few weeks with our tech challenges as we continue to refine our virtual worship experience. So uh, thank you for that. And thank you for the worship assistants that are here today uh, to share in our worship together. Let us begin on this Reformation Sunday with a mighty fortress is our God. Continue now with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God. We'll take a moment in silent reflection.
faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through the, his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Our sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Amen. We'll continue with our song of praise. The first reading for Reformation Sunday is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be like, it will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The psalm for today is Psalm 46, and we will read it responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains shake in the depths of the sea. Though its waters rage and foam, 
and though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be shaken. God shall help it at the break of day. And the, the nations rage and, and the kingdoms kingdom shake. God speaks and, and the earth melts away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come, Come now, now, regard, regard the works of the Lord. Lord. What, what desolations, desolations God has brought upon the earth. Behold the one who makes war to cease in all the world, who breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. The second reading is from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 to 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of the works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith, apart from works prescribed by the law. Today's Gospel reading comes from John, the eighth chapter. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. 
They answered Jesus, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us take a moment in prayer. Gracious God, we do thank you again for the gift of this day. Every day is a precious gift, and every breath we take a gift. In your love that sustains us and surrounds us, all a gift. We thank you for this season that is upon us, uh, the beauty of it, the colors, and the opportunity to, to gather in, to harvest, to, to come together in warmth and shelter. Um, we especially remember those who are challenged at this time as weather changes and as cold comes upon us that are, are challenged with uh, a safe, warm place to be. Continue to use us to help provide for those in need among us. For this and for your uh, many blessings in our lives, we do give you great thanks in Christ's name. Amen. Today is Reformation Sunday. It is always the last Sunday of October, closest to Reformation Day on the church calendar, which is always October 31st, which shares the date with All Hallows' Eve or Halloween. The liturgical color is red, commemorating the refining fire of the Holy Spirit that is always at work for the well-being of people, the church, and society. The Protestant Rever Reformation marks this significant turning point in the church uh, in Western and Northern Europe in particular, uh, and in human history. It has its marks. The impact Martin Luther had on the world is still evident even today, and will be for generations to come, especially in the areas of theology, education, and government. We might not realize all of those uh, changes that have occurred over time, but they are real, and we continue to uh, live within those today. Also in society, especially in the care and the support of those most vulnerable, such as the young and elderly, which Martin Luther had a deep heart for and had programs, social programs, back in his day 500 years ago when none existed to help care for them. Time magazine featured Martin Luther as one of the top 10 most influential persons of the last millennium. As a small town priest in the 1500s, Martin Luther disrupted the dominant religious, economic, and political landscape of his time. The founder of our Lutheran faith tradition believed in a living, daring, and confidence in God's grace. This helped him challenge the most powerful people and institutions in Western Europe at the time, the Holy Roman Emperor, the Pope, and the Holy Roman Catholic Church of that day. The results were nothing short of changing the lives of millions of people. I had the privilege to travel to Germany last year as part of my sabbatical to walk in the footsteps of Martin Luther to see his hometown, where he was born, where he died, to visit the home con his home congregation, to stay at the monastery where he was educated and trained as a priest, to travel to the city where he taught as a young university professor and where he preached and wrote that sparked the Protestant Reformation where he married and raised his family. It was all inspiring and a fine learning experience. It was a privilege to be a part of that. The contrasts between the everyday life of Martin Luther and the extraordinary history-shaking reformation that helped spark what was nothing short of a miracle was that work of the Holy Spirit in and with him and with others. The reality that Martin Luther was very much human and sinful and yet amazingly gifted and courageous and an instrument of God is strong and continues to show us even these many uh, hundreds of years later. This year is the 500th anniversary of his famous article, The Freedom of a Christian, which really is a strong 
foundation of his theology. He helped to bring about the necessary changes in the church of the day with his life-giving message of grace. This is still a transforming message for us and a blessing to us today that has changed hearts and continues to change hearts these many years later. For Martin Luther, shifting from a life uh, based on a fear of a vengeful, terrifying God to a life based on faith in a loving, gracious God was the start of a religious, social, and political revolution in his time. We live in the light of that revolution today and the vital theological understanding which is grounded in this truth. Because God already loves and forgives us, we are set free to live God's ways which are centered in God's word and in the life and ministry of Jesus and on the love and service of others, especially the vulnerable. This is a relationship that starts with God's love up front for us first and for all people and then follows with our response to this wonderful gift. It's a simple, powerful message, but oftentimes we convolute and switch it around. That is, we try to earn God's love and favor first, and that gets us off track. God's love and favor for us is first and foremost, and then we respond to that. In other words, we trust that God's love and grace shown to the world in Jesus is a gift to us, first, foremost, and always, and it's not based on who we are or what we do. We do not earn or work for this gift of grace, love, and favor. God freely gives out of God's deep and abiding essence of who God is. God is love. This is incredible, hard to believe. It seems so simple, and it is, and yet we do struggle with this powerful truth. But it is the truth that sets our hearts free. And it is what John, the gospel writer, spoke about. Uh, know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And Jesus Christ is that truth. And Jesus Christ is the one who sets us free. That's what he came to share and to show. We heard those words from chapter 8, verse 36 of John's gospel. You can go back, if you wish, during the week and just reflect on it. Jesus said, so if the Son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. And again, as I mentioned, this was kind of the basic foundation of Luther's treatise uh, of freedom of a Christian, which this year is the 500th anniversary of it. He uh, wrote that. Jesus frees us from the false understanding and the false belief that if we work hard enough, if we are good enough, God will like us. God will love us, God will forgive us, and God will save us. But the truth is, God loves us, forgives us, and saves us not because of our efforts, but because of who God is and what God wants for us, for all of humanity, and has made known to us and shown it to us in Jesus. Therefore, therefore we seek to live our lives, shape our lives according to what God desires for us as shown to us in Jesus and in his word. God understands that we struggle with this truth, uh, that we're not perfectionists in this truth. We stumble, we fall, we get confused, we reject it, we just outright don't want to be a part of it, whatever the case. But that doesn't change the truth of God's position of love for us, first and foremost and for this great gift of grace that pours out to us in Christ, which moves our hearts um, to open ourselves to say, okay, God, let me be open to your Spirit's leading and guiding. Strengthen, strengthen us to do what you desire. So as we understand this, and our desire and our motivations to love God and live godly lives, comes out of not obligation, but out of gratitude for who God is and what God has done and continues to do for us. So not obligation, 
but out of gratitude. Jesus underscored this truth in his ministry and in his teaching, in his own life, and in his resurrection. God desires our trusting hearts today and every day, knowing this truth really does set us free. Knowing this liberating truth is not a matter so much of our head knowledge. It does not mean learning facts and agreeing with doctrines. Those are important. Those are a part of our faith tradition. But knowing the truth that this is a relationship of love grounded in love that is what really moves us and changes us. We become disciples then of Jesus by remaining with him, staying in this love relationship throughout our life. Uh, again, not in perfection, but in stumbling and struggling and running and freeing and dancing and all of that mixed together as we go through our journeys of life. God's word of truth in Jesus exposes the hatred of um, selfishness and the lies that enslave us. Jesus promises to set us free as he comes to us, and he says, I forgive you, I set you free, now come follow me. Jesus invites us to know this in a real way in our lives. Jesus knows and understands that some days we're going to get this, and other days we will be challenged by it. Other days we will stumble. We will be overcome by our fears, our doubts, and our own sin. We will flounder, we will struggle, we will fall. Thank God Jesus is patient, compassionate, understanding, and present, waiting with his truth and love to welcome us again and again, to set us free again and again. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll join together in singing Amazing Grace. Continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll continue with the prayers of the people. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. As the earth changes, as mountains shake, and the waters roar, may we care for this planet as a holy habitation for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind, especially wildfires and hurricanes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let your loving wisdom and guidance pour over all who are casting ballots in the upcoming election, that the election process will be free, fair, safe, and sane, and that common sense and a vision for those most vulnerable may prevail throughout the entire procedure. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land, Free all from forced labor and human trafficking and protect all in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Release those living in bondage to debts, loneliness, depression, anxiety, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing touch to those who are ill or recovering, especially Ron's brother Gary, Karen S., Artie, Dorothy's sister, Margaret Ann, Mary Jane McCullough, Daryl, Doug's sister, Ray, Dave, Carter Michael and his family, Carol, Mel, Donna, and Pastor April. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give thanks to courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant peace and comfort for Bonnie and Lynn, protection and respite for all frontline healthcare workers, inspiration for all working to develop a safe and effective vaccine to combat the coronavirus, safety for wildland fighters, and for all serving on the front lines of the pandemic. Comfort all who have lost loved ones due to racism, poverty, or COVID-19, and those who are easy to ignore or hungry or bullied. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for renewal of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. Incline your ear to us now and hear our cries as we call to you, O Lord.
and fold in your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of our crucified and risen Lord be with you all. Take a moment to share that gift with one another, those that are in your presence. And thank you so much for um, your support of the ministry here at St. Paul Lutheran Church. It's greatly appreciated. And our offering song today is Father, We Thank You. continue with our offering prayer. Let us pray together. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have, have set, set before us these gifts of your good creation. creation. Prepare, Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. banquet. Nourish Prepare us with these rich food and drink, and, and send, send us forth to set tables, tables in the midst of a suffering, suffering world. world. Through the, the bread, bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we prepare ourselves in this special meal, we remember Jesus gathering with his disciples together in the upper room in Jerusalem. And before them, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Eat of it and do so in remembrance of me. And from the table he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant, shed in my blood for you, for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, and do so in remembrance of me. And Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As you share this meal at home, this is the bread of life, the body of Christ, given for you. This is the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ shed for you. And we will continue with our communion song. Although I speak with angels, 
song, my faith, my knowledge all surpass, but have no love, my gifts are vain, as clanging gong or bearing bust. Oh, oh love is patient, love is kind, and never vain with pulsing pride. Love bears all things, all things endures, all things must end. Love will abide. For now we peer at darkened glass, our visions end, our tongues all cease. In part we know, in part now see, then we will see. Love a face to face. The gifts are many of the body one, and into one are all baptized. Be love and share one heart, one mind, one hope, one faith, one love. join together in our prayer after communion. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have have once once again again fed us us with food food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Christ. Lead Lead us us from from this place, place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard vineyard, to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Mother in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Our sending song, How Firm a Foundation. Go in peace and remember the poor. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Stay tuned for Kids Time with Rebecca, which is available on a separate post uh, on our website. We'll conclude our service with our postlude.